Hello everyone and welcome to another Movie Monday here on Questrified. My name is Serafina. And my name is Bray. And today we will be taking a look at Psycho 3. Let's get into it. Released in 1986, directed by Anthony Perkins and written by Charles Edward Pogue. The movie opens with Maureen Coyle, played by Diane Scarwood, which some might recognize from the movie Mommy Dearest, where she played Christina. In this movie, she is playing an almost nun who has a crisis of faith. She screams out, There! There is no God. Yeah, and she's having that conflict now. The other nuns come running to her aid as she has climbed the bell tower and is going to jump. At first asks, like, I guess the Virgin Mary or Jesus really a sign. But she don't get that, so she decides, I'm just going to go up to the top of the tower and yeet myself off of this. During a struggle, she pushes one of the nuns off of her and the nun falls to her death. They tell her, was it your sin great enough? You'll burn in hell for this. Maureen leaves the convent and heads out to hitchhike. After this, Maureen just walks off. She got her a little bit of a brief trial with the nuns and their verdict of this was, you're just gonna go to hell once you die. That's it. She is picked up by Dwayne Duke, played by Jeff Fahey. Yes, his car is very beat up and Dwayne Duke is a heavy talker. He goes up and down about everything. Like, oh, you're an angel. You can have fallen from the sky and taken a tight light tumble. He just continues to talk through the whole scene. He talks through the dissolve to the next scene and he continues to talk. As night falls and rain is coming down hard, I have to point out that it rains in every single Psycho movie. Anyway, Duke, as his friends call him, gets a little, uh, touchy-feely. Before the whole, like, rapey feels came on to this, he got the little pervert feels with him shining a light at her legs, do an upskirt with the flashlight, and then proceeds to go up her body to her face and just shine the light right into her face. Maureen turns him down and she flees from the car. Duke takes off and leaves her in the middle of nowhere where in monsoon season. She gets out after that. Uh, she, she flat out smacks him in the face and he lets out the line, you could have been coming instead of going. Ew. We are now taken to the man, Norman Bates, played by the effervescent Anthony Perkins. He is gathering up birds for his hobby of taxidermy. When you cut to him taxidermy and he's just looking at the thing, he's taking a spoon to fill up the birds with the taxidermy stuff and he takes that same spoon and whips him up some peanut butter from the jar and puts it right on to some Ritz crackers. As he pulls off a piece of newspaper, we see Mrs. Spool's picture as her disappearance has been reported. Norman has a flashback to the end of Psycho 2 when he killed Mrs. Spool. Dwayne Duke uh, appears up at the motel. He honks honks a couple times and Norman just steps on out at the very top of the stairs and says, I'll be down there in just a minute. Walks off and then proceeds to come all down after he spots Dwayne Duke looking into the uh, cash register that's left open. I am not sure why Duke stopped at the Bates Motel as he tells Norman that he cannot afford a room but there is a help wanted sign and Duke seems to be interested in that. He takes a job and Norman heads to the infamous diner to get Duke something to eat. When he gets to the diner we meet the woman who will be the one causing Norman some unrest. Tracy Venable played by Roberta Maxwell is a reporter who wants to figure Norman out and see if he is connected with Mrs. Spool's disappearance. She tries to interview him but Norman really doesn't want the attention. The reporter uh, Venable kind of acts like the new Lila Mary type character who kind of is just a nuisance to Norman who kind of pushes him further into what, what he does and she just torments him day in day out and you really despise the character for what she's done to Norman by the time it's over. The sheriff John Hunt once again played by Hugh Gillen. He is returning obviously from Psycho 2. He's pretty much telling her don't mess with him but he don't take kindly to these rumors about Norman murdering people and all that. And after what Mary and Lila did, pretty much justified why he doesn't want people messing with Norman. This is when Maureen walks into the diner and Norman has flashbacks to Marion Crane. Maureen is supposed to look like Marion Crane and even has the same initials, MC. And something that's a little odd is that they are, this is a big plot point, is that Norman is like kind of tormented with this thing about Maureen being Marion. And he kind of thinks that it may be Marion like kind of resurrected. But what makes no sense is they didn't get an actress who looked pretty close to like Janet Lee and, and if this was like a movie like a sequel to the 1998 remake this would make more sense to the short hair blonde um, Marion Crane. Norman hears that she is looking for a place to stay for the night and he books it back to the motel. Maureen shows up at the Bates Motel and encounters Duke. He apologizes for the prior night and checks her into a room. Room number one to be exact and he also grifts five dollars off of her by overcharging her for the room. 
room. Norman sees her get to the motel from a window in his house and carries on a discussion with whom he thinks is his mother, Mrs. Spool, now stuffed. He is worried that it is Marion back for him and Mrs. Spool tells him to take care of it, as in kill her. Norman doesn't like that idea, so air quotes, mother threatens that she will handle it, and she does. Norman, dressed as his mother, goes to get Maureen in the shower, but finds that she is taking a bath and she has slit her own wrists. She sees Norman as the Virgin Mary, and Norman actually saves her. And once more, once Maureen has been saved, you have Venable there trying to say that, oh, Norman is the murderer. He is, he's all messed up. And eventually Maureen asks for Norman to be uh, in there so she can thank him for saving her. And M Norman had talks to her, given off, obviously he's very nervous, it seems, very anxious about this Dune part. He still thinks that she's like Marion Crane. He then offers her a place to stay while she works through her problems. FOC, of course, free of charge. Maureen and Norman take a liking to one another, but Mother is still out to clean up filthy girls. She takes out a woman that Duke brings home for some smooching, and then a woman who is at the motel for a party celebrating the big game. Uh, yeah, they're the oddest things there, and they're just running amok. They're just tearing up all of the things. They're in, like, the office section. They're in the cabins. They're just everywhere. Venable is still on the hunt to get dirt on Norman. She wondered how he knew to save Maureen and has hired Duke to give her information on what is happening at the motel. Um, but previously in the film, Dwayne Duke ran into Venable. He kind of gets information about Norman being a loony, as one Toomey would call him. And, uh, he tries to get with, uh, Venable, but she ain't having none. And so he ends up with a another girl who was played by an actress who was in Friday the 13th Part 5, as I believe her character's name in that was Robin. Um, but she goes there, and the best scene takes place during this, where she's in there all acting sexy, and Duke is just sitting in a chair with two lamps, one lamp covering his, his crotch, and another lamp he's just using to, like, strobe light effect. I don't know what is going on and why he decided to do this, but she proceeds to start licking up on these horn pictures that are turned into, like, a Frankenstein's monster of a collage, and you wonder really what's going on there. Um, after the whole intercourse they had, they proceed, well, Dwayne proceeds to be a complete utter dick, like he is, and he just tell this girl to just, like, get a cab, get out of here, I don't want to see you in my sight. Norman, dressed as his mother figure, breaks through the payphone and just repeatedly stabs her and just goes to town on her. And after that, the next day, Norman is cleaning up the mess, and Dwayne Duke notices that, and he kind of tells Venable about that, trying to see if that works as good information, but he doesn't really have the best information to give to her. She goes through Spool's apartment for any clues and finds the number of the Bates Motel written down. She speaks to Stadler, the current owner of the diner, and he directs her to the previous owner of the diner, and he tells Venable that Spool was in an asylum. She also tells Maureen exactly what Norman has done, and Maureen alibis Norman regarding the missing party goer, but then chooses to leave the motel. Norman is crestfallen. When the police come looking for the missing party goer, Norman is antsy as his mother figure is still up in her bedroom. He tries to stop the police but fails. Norman makes himself the most suspicious person in the world. He's like taking a page out of Marion Crane's book from the first movie. He's gotta make himself overtly suspicious. He acts so suspicious and he runs up the stairs to I guess run to his mother and when he goes in there, she's not there. The much younger cop comes in there. He looks at Norman and he's like, you see, he's like, what the hell is this guy doing? He walks around, looks nothing there. No Miss Spool body anywhere. And Norman just is kind of perplexed. It's like, where's mother? Did she get up and roam around or something? However, his mother figure is missing. After the police leave, he runs around his house looking for her. He then finds a note telling him that she is in cabin 12, which is Duke's cabin. Duke has found her and hidden her away. He blackmails or attempts to blackmail Norman. Norman is having none of it and kills Duke on his own without his mother figure's help. Uh, Dwayne Duke gets up and sits in a chair and out of all the weird stuff that happens in this film, the funniest part starts to happen here where just Norman Bates grabs up an item and just hucks it right at and he Dwayne Duke's head. Dwayne Duke sits there and just takes it to the face and they get up on the bed and the bed scoots out from him and that's when Anthony Perkins gets like the advantage. Anthony Perkins pretty much lays out. He knows that even if he gave Dwayne Duke what he was asking for, he would still expose his mom and he can't allow that. There should be no one who knows about his mother and so obviously Dwayne Duke is getting out from there and the corpse for some reason is pointing. I don't know who stepped up its finger to point in the direction of the guitar and Norman Bates does his best Jeff Jarrett and proceeds to bash in um, Dwayne Duke's head with his guitar. But as we do find out later when uh, Norman is going to dispose 
of Dwayne Duke's body, Dwayne Duke isn't dead. He just merely was knocked out. He puts him in the swamp, and when he returns to the house, he finds Maureen has come back to him. She realizes, well, yeah, he may have taken a life, but he can be saved, and I'm not going to give up on him. So she takes her bags and stuff, and she goes back to the base motel. She tries to bridge the gap between them, but Norman's mother figure calls out to him, and Maureen suffers the same fate as Arbogast did in the original, with a few exceptions. She falls down the stairs in the same dramatic fashion and gets stabbed in the back of the head by a statue that resides at the bottom of the stairs. Tracy Venable then goes out to the motel to look for Maureen so she can change her story to the police and then Norman can be arrested. She goes into the house and finds Maureen dead on the couch. And when Venable gets into the house, she calls Maureen a very stupid little girl or something like that. She then comes face to face with Norman dressed up like his mother. And this to one of the weirder sections like the whole Dwayne Duke with the lamps and that is we see Norman in full outfit which isn't something we haven't seen before but it's the fact we get to see Norman speak with his mother's voice and it just it's something iconic but also something a little odd about it I can't put my finger on it but it is well done get to see Norman finally using his mother's voice he is wearing a big smile and simply asks her why, why can't, can't you leave, leave my, my poor son, son my Norman alone Venable then starts to move away from Norman all the while telling him that Mrs. Spool wasn't his mother she was his aunt who killed his father in a jealous rage and was committed and this proceeds into his chase of Venable where she proceeds to go up the stairs and his face is at one point darkened so much that you see his eyes these like piercing eyes like he is Emotep from the original mummy Norman after the death of Maureen has had enough of the mother figure Norman gets in to the room and closes the door and stuff but after hearing all this stuff seems like Norman has gained his sanity he is now overpowered the mother character and so he he takes off the wig and the dress and he turns the knife on the mummified Mrs. Spool finally gets his sanity and he does not kill Venable, which is kind of a bad thing because in the end should have at least gotten that opportunity to get rid of one of the more annoying characters. He is then arrested again and the movie ends with him being driven away in a squad car. He pulls out his mother figure's hand and smiles directly into the camera. That is Psycho 3. Overall it's a weird movie. It has some down points with stuff like Maureen for example and its heavy reliance on redoing some things from the original movie but I think in the end this is a very stellar sequel. It's a good fit in this trilogy at first of these um, films. It is a weird entry into the franchise, but it's like a guilty pleasure. I enjoyed Tony Perkins' performance and consider this movie uh, a success, especially for his directing ability. So that is going to do it for us this week. Thank you for joining us. Please take care of yourselves. Bye. Bye.